So cubers, 14 by 17. Go back to my long bow. To do it? Yeah, but be very careful on that. And I brought that up for a reason, guys. You can actually get in really big trouble if you just remove those. And you'll see a lot of techs do that. Yeah. But you need to always confirm with the ordering physician or the nurse first and get that on documentation. Because they can come back and say, well, you messed up our infection or you made the injury worse or you didn't ask permission first, blah, blah, blah. Always double check, confirm, document. Remove that stuff. And just again, just to reiterate, we're going to be doing these uh, positions upright for recumbent, depending on patient condition and uh, what they're able to do. Thank you. So, IR side, we call the sides. For that humerus, we're going to be using the 14 by 17. That is one of our long bones. We're going to want to make sure we're able to fit all that on one cassette there, and we're gonna be doing that primarily lengthwise. Shoulder and clavicle, those will be 12 by, uh, 10 by 12 inch uh, collimation and IR size. We're gonna be doing these crosswise or lengthwise depending on patient body habits. Scapula, that's uh, primarily a long piece of anatomy, so we're gonna be doing lengthwise on 10 by 12. And for our AC joints, those bilateral AC joints, we're going to want to do 14 by 17 crosswise. So do make note of those orientations because it is going to vary per body part. I believe Anthony made this point the other day. I always think about the shape of the anatomy that you're imaging. It's kind of like a good little clue indication of how you're going to turn that cassette. Think about the humerus. It's long, right? It's long lengthwise. Shoulder and clavicle, they're more wide. So we need the crosswise. Scapula is what? Long. Mm -hmm. Lengthwise. AC joints, wide. So crosswise again. And for these projections, standard 40 inch SID. Um, believe the AC joints. That's the only so one that's going to be 72. It's the only one that's going to be 72 inches because we're going to want to visualize both of those. Markers, right or left side, of course, must be included. Avoid using visual annotations. We're always going to want to um, use our anatomical markers for all. All images that we take. But Mr. Hernandez, my text always is visual. They say it's okay. I want to do what my text says. <laughs> <laughs> we always use anatomical markers. The registry will always ask we want to use anatomical but markers. My text says that's the only way to do it. That's the best way. The registry doesn't care what your text says. <laughs> anatomical <laughs> markers. <laughs> always. <Yeah>. Good answer. <laughs> All right. So radiation protection, of course, we're going to want to try and close that collimation. Uh, not too much is to not clip off any anatomy, but we do want to have some close collimation, especially on our, for example, clavicles and AC joints. We're going to use what's called a slit collimation. Since those are pretty small pieces of anatomy, we're going to want to close those down uh, vertically. Gonadal shielding, present, and optimum technique factors. So adjusting the KVP and mass to make sure we have optimal penetration while minimizing patient use. You said slit collimation? Slit collimation. So it's just basically a slit. And it is referred to as such when it's in that slit, like a very long horizontal shape. Mm -hmm. You guys should have seen lab this week, yes? Mm -hmm. I, just, I, I couldn't hear if you said slit. Oh yeah, slit. S-L-I-T, sorry. 
So patient instruction, of course, we're going to explain and uh, you can even demonstrate what the position is for the patient. Respiration is going to be suspended for most of these positions. Transthoracic <coughs> lateral projection may use a breathing technique, which is uh, called orthostatic breathing, where we just have them breathe normally as a way to blur out the ribs on the image. And uh, with using an orthostatic technique, we're going to use a low MA with a longer exposure time. So we're going to go over some projections of the shoulder here. Okay, so for our shoulder, the projections we're going to be doing, AP projections, we're doing internal rotation, external rotation. Depending on the situation, we may even have to do a neutral position. AP oblique, also known as the Gracie method. Reishi method, Thora transthoracic lateral, known as the Lawrence method, infero superior axial, known as the Lawrence, and PA oblique, which is going to be our scapular rod. Those are both referred to as Lawrence. There's no overlap there. Yes. It's not a type of one. Oh. Was it the same Lawrence, or is it a different Lawrence who did it each one? It's the, it's the, I mean, there's, there's the armpit method that you're used to. There's an alternative kind of opposite way to do it. So quick question guys, while y'all are writing, when would we ever need to do that neutral position? If they is that trauma reason, or is there a special situation for that? Trauma view. Or trauma. So if you're doing a neutral position, do you do the internal and external rotation as well? No. You do not, correct. Because you just play it as it lies, like it's saying golf, play it as it lies. You cannot manipulate that arm yeah. if there is risk of trauma or dislocation. No. That's a test question. Okay, so AP projection, internal rotation. Patient is going to be supine or upright. We're going to be centered to the shoulder joint. Sorry? Okay, Emily, have a question? Emily is, oh. Uh, what was the SID for all of these projections? Ah. 40. So the SID is primarily going to be 40 inches for all these. Except for, for all of them. Except, except for AC, AC joints. joints. Except for AC joints. Except for AC. Okay, thank you. All right. So AP projection of the shoulder, internal rotation, supine or upright. We're going to be centered to the so shoulder joint. Uh, elbow is going to be slightly flexed. We, we're not going to have a completely straight arm when doing this position. And we're going to have the arm rotated internally and rest the back of the hand on the hip flex. So, that's going to place our, our uh, humeral epicondyles perpendicular to the IR. We need to remember that, guys. We've already discussed. You know what's happening to those epicondyles. And before you slip, switch to slide, what's going to be in profile? For which one? For this, this position. position. What's going to be in profile? The lesser. Lesser. Lesser to the Lesser to the By the way, as well, guys, upright, even though you have both those um, options, uprights can be your more ideal, optimal way of getting that x ray if they can stand. Okay. So a little bit more about this position here. Our central ray, it's going to be a perpendicular central ray, and it's going to enter one inch inferior to the corticoid process, which is that landmark that I'm sure we've all learned how to palpate in lab. Were y'all able, able to find that on each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we all say no. <laughs> Make sure whoever your partner is, you find that coracoid guy. That's ideal. It's the only way you're going to center any of these things properly. Make sure you're actually copying the coracoid and not something else. Yeah, that coracoid is going to be a key piece of uh, anatomy in this chapter. IR collimation. Is it really easy to find or not really? 
It depends on the person. Not really. Mm -hmm. Try. Mm -hmm. You can find it on yourself. No, I don't think I'll find it on myself, but I'm just trying to find it on his head phone. And, and I got it. You found it on me, of course, because he's the palpation king. Once again, guys, just lightly touching, you're not going to find You got to dig your fingers in the Yeah, he's the palpation king. It hurts. I was trying to dig too thick. And I said, I don't know, Mr. Fong. Sweet, what are you doing? He's sticky thick. No, he's just like fingers. He's 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 like fingers. It was always really hard to find. I mean, people hated me as a lap partner because it was like always hard. Anthony's is hard to find. Yeah. Strong chest. Huh? Strong chest. Yeah. Sean, you just. Star, star Trek. Sean, everybody Star fights Trek. for Sean when we try to go to lap. He's, he's the easiest outfit. Well, <laughs> I tried to do John, but I don't know. I saw all those dips. I don't know. <laughs> Everybody's poking me. He's like, first of all, <laughs> you got to pay. I said, money. <laughs> All right, guys, so <laughs> collimation on this one, of course, we're going to be using our 10 by 12 cassette here. And uh, we're going to be doing that crosswise for the most part. Of course, depending on, on the anatomy and body habits, we may go lengthwise. But primarily, you'll, you'll usually see this crosswise. And if we do crosswise, we're going to want about an inch and a half above the shoulder uh, as far as light goes. And then about an inch lateral to the shoulder. And we're going to want to make sure to include the sternal end of the clavicle and the proximal third of the humerus. Please put a star by that guy. That's why I have to put the star on the slide because you're going to see a lot of texts over collimate on this exam. Now, y'all already heard that I'm crazy about collimation, but on this one in particular, you need to keep that collimation pretty open on the sides because you need to see, like it says, the sternal end. I just always include the SC joint on there. Is vital. You see a lot of your pictures clip it off as well, even in your book. Do make note that is required for an optimized shoulder radiograph. You need that sternal end on that x ray. And if you do do lengthwise, you're probably you're going to be getting more of the humerus and less of the clavicle included on that. And this is by special request. Right. And here's what that would look like. We're going to be seeing bony and shaft structures of the shoulder. And the start of the show that we're going to see here is this lesser tubercle. The greater tubercle is going to be superimposed upon the rip on the humeral head right there. And you're going to see that. Oh, Emily has a question. Go ahead, Emily. 